Welcome back to our series, Catching Up with Sitecore JavaScript Services. This series addresses common questions about JSS that come up from our clients, partners, and developers. Today's topic is deployment topologies and strategies for improving performance to get those blazing fast pages. After watching this video, you will have a better understanding of the different deployment topologies that can be used in production. Additionally, I will introduce a couple of non-standard topologies that are best for when performance is your top concern. First, let's talk about the standard topologies that ship with JSS. The first is integrated mode, where Sitecore manages its own same server node service. The second is headless proxy with server-side rendering, where Sitecore and node are decoupled, and the node server acts as a proxy between Sitecore and end users. In integrated topology, CD servers manage their own same server out of process pool node services to perform server side rendering of JSS apps. Since the server is shared, the CPU resources are shared, and the node servers cannot be scaled separately. That's why this topology doesn't scale as well as the other options. Generally, this topology is only good for scenarios where the JSS app is embedded into one page. In this case, treat this exactly like a normal MVC topology when it comes to scaling, except that all CDs need one node process. We do not recommend integrated mode for high traffic production scenarios because of its scaling limitations. Additionally, since node server-side renders the entire page as a block, and not as individual renderings, traditional output caching mechanisms become all or nothing. In other words, if caching is enabled, it forces caching of the entire page, which is almost always not what's desired. In headless proxy with server-side rendering topology, the JavaScript front end is physically decoupled from the Sitecore back end. Node servers act as a proxy between Sitecore content delivery servers and the end user's browser. They make requests to the JSS APIs running on the CD servers and then render the JSS application to HTML before returning it to the client. Note on the diagram that when we talk about headless proxy topology, the proxy aspect only applies to CD servers. CMs still use integrated mode. A common misconception is that as the end user browses the app, every route loads from the server side rendered HTML. But the way it works is that only the user's first request to the app comes from the server, and subsequent route navigation is processed client side. Server side rendering is good for SEO, and having Sitecore behind a proxy is good for security. This is generally a fine option for most clients on JSS, until we get to enterprise level apps where traffic is exceptionally high. More on this a bit later. Enabling caching is the easiest way to improve performance of your JSS apps. See the caching page in the JSS docs and video number four in this YouTube series for information on caching techniques in JSS. If output caching alone does not get you the necessary results, the next step is scaling the infrastructure. In headless proxy with server-side rendering, the Sitecore CDs and node servers can scale separately. Proper load testing is required to find the best ratio of CD to nodes for your specific code base. But if you have no idea where to start, Two node servers for every CD is a reasonable starting point. The Sitecore CDs can be scaled horizontally and vertically to the limits of the layout service. Rendering JavaScript server-side takes CPU resources, and scaling it takes more of them. So you can scale Sitecore CDs without adding more node rendering instances. Generally speaking, you'd want at least as many node processes as number of cores. This is achieved via node clusters. So here's an interesting question. What if caching is enabled and infrastructure is already scaled to the maximum reasonable size and is still not fast enough? What's going on and what can we do about it? 
I'll address the what's going on question first. Let's abstract away the load balancing from the headless SSR proxy diagram and focus on what happens when the CD server services a user's request for a web page. It's important to understand that rendering a JSS route is a two-step process. First, the layout service utilizes Sitecore's render pipelines to assemble the route's layout data in JSON. Then, this JSON data is sent to the node server, where it's passed to the JavaScript layer as input in order to generate HTML. The CDs in headless SSR proxy topology are marginally more efficient than the CDs in MVC. The main thing they do is handle calls to layout service. And as we just saw, the layout service processes page layout to JSON, not to HTML. So certain optimizations have been built in, like bypassing razor views and skipping certain pipelines. Load testing during development demonstrated that JSS CDs are roughly 20% faster than MVC CDs. However, while layout service scales better than MVC, Node in general, and especially server-side rendering of virtual DOM-based frameworks like React, Angular, and Vue scale worse. This is because Node has to virtualize the DOM before it could even begin rendering, which is extra work that's normally done by the browser, and it's very time intensive. So if you expect your app to face very high load, investing in CDN-based deployment topologies may be necessary to achieve the desirable performance. This brings us to the next section of this video, advanced deployment topologies. In addition to the standard deployment topologies, there are two additional topologies that can be utilized. These are best for when performance is the primary concern, and these will achieve static site-like blazing fast pages. But both of these topologies require development hours as they are not configured out of the box. Let's take a look at them in more detail. In CDN with client-side rendering topology, a CDN is used to serve static assets to the end user, and the work of rendering the JavaScript app is offloaded to the browser. The way to implement this is keep the CM operating in integrated mode as usual, and push the static JSS app assets that get generated on the CM at build time to a CDN. These assets consist of JavaScript files and an HTML file with the DOM root of the JSS app. Set up the CDN as a caching reverse proxy over the root domain and ensure it caches pre-rendered HTML pages, but not calls to layout service. When the end user initially loads the page, the static assets that are needed to process the app in browser are fetched from the CDN. And finally, if there is personalized content, Subsequent calls need to be made back to the layout service after initial page load to fetch this data. Note that this portion of work can be delayed until a later phase if your project isn't utilizing personalization yet. In this topology, there is very little server-side processing happening upon the end user's initial route request. All the DOM virtualizing and JavaScript execution work is distributed to the user's browser. So the performance improvements are dramatic. An extra benefit is decreased infrastructure cost. As you saw in the diagram, the CD environment doesn't use any node servers since the app is being client-side rendered. The downside of this topology is the cost and risk associated with developing and maintaining this customization. Additionally, Google is fine at crawling single page apps, but not all search engines are. So the client's locale affects whether this is a feasible option. This final CDN with server-side pre-render topology is very similar to the previous option, except that the CDN is used to serve a pre-rendered app to the end user instead of static assets. The way to implement this is when content authors make changes to the CM, the integrated node service server-side renders the routes in the JSS app and the resulting HTML gets pushed to a CDN. This could be hooked into a publish event. 
On initial page load, end users load the server-side rendered app from the CDN. But just like in the previous topology, if there is personalized content, subsequent calls need to be made back to the layout service after initial page load to fetch this data. And this portion of work can be delayed until a later phase if your project isn't utilizing personalization yet. Since the end user is getting preloaded HTML on page load, this approach poses no SEO concerns. Performance improvements will be dramatic. If done right, it should be like loading a static site. Cost benefits and risks are the same as the previous approach. Thanks for watching. My name is Anastasia Flynn and I hope you enjoyed this video. I'm on Twitter and Psycho Community Slack if you would like to submit a topic for this series. Please follow the Psychor JSS hashtag for all things JSS and the Learn Psychor hashtag for educational content from my team.